I left uh, for Iraq and arrived there on the 7th of December. I uh, started my IA journey in the beginning of November. Uh, went for about 10 months. I was the chief of staff, uh, also known also as the deputy commander. So in the Navy, we like to call it a deputy commander. In the Army, they like to call it a chief of staff. But I was the chief of staff for the joint contracting command located in, uh, in Baghdad in the uh, international zone, not in the green zone. A lot of people get that confused. So it, my, my, uh, my camp was actually located right across the street from Prime Minister Maliki's uh, residence. So as the Chief of Staff of the Joint Contract Command, our job was to put uh, contracts in place with the local populace to try to stimulate security and stability through business actions. And so we were looking to put contracts in place with women-owned businesses, local folks, and, and employ um, the, the local populace to get them off the street, uh, get them working, get them focused on, uh, on working uh, issues to rebuild their, their stability in their country. They have internet cafes all over the place, and so that's how you keep in contact with your family. The family is very supportive. Uh, the communities were very supportive. Um, you know, folks love to send things, and I will tell you that the nice part is when you get those Girl Scout cookies, it's a piece of America. And then when you share those with the locals, and that was one thing that we did get to do. We did hire uh, local employees in Iraq and in Afghanistan to be our translators, to be some help us with contracting, um, help us pave the way. Um, those folks really appreciated that little piece of, uh, of America with us, too. Now, one in particular, there was a, a lawyer that worked with us. He was a, a former colonel in the Iraqi army, and uh, he had some great stories about what, what it was like. He had actually been in, thrown in prison uh, three times under the Saddam Hussein regime, and he, uh, he was very proud to serve and, and with us, and it was kind of nice. Um, not without fear sometimes. And I guess another event that was important was um, the day of elections. Um, one of our cleaning crew members, he had come in early to work and went back out and risked going back in and out of the gates, and he went out to go vote. And he came back with his purple finger from voting, and he was very excited about participating in that. Some of the most interesting experiences I've ever had were, were, were right there. When you look back, and everyone will always say, you know, what was your favorite tour? It was always my last one, but I think this is one that will endure uh, my tour in Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, I think back, if I, I, I could not be home for Christmas, and so one of the most exciting things I had was that I was in a beautiful palace with General Farouk and uh, General Swan, and we were discussing the turnover of the international zone to the Iraqis, and we were drinking chai in this beautiful palace and on Christmas Day I thought if I couldn't be home this is what it was all about and so I like to joke around that I had the opportunity to be in the front row seat of future History Channel episodes and, and I got to watch everything unfold right there and the neatest part about it was while we were walking and driving through the, the country seeing the young sailors uh, soldiers, airmen, marines, and what they're capable of. And I, as an old guy, as I consider myself, when I look at those young folks, I mean, there's definitely, there's definitely hope for our country when you see how their contributions and how active they were.